So, here we have a water butt, similar to what I've got over there. Um, so, this is 100 litres. Nothing in the box? Nope, nothing in the box. So this is the water butt guys. Um, so as you can see it's a hundred litres. Hundred litre water butt. So you can get the lid off. That's the lid. And what have we got in here? So it comes with a stand which you literally just slot together. So Let's have a look at that. So this is a stand. Looks like there's four pieces to it. So we just take that out and it actually comes with an attachment for your hose. So this will siphon water from my uh, downspike pipe on the gutting system. Uh, as you can see that's what it comes with. Um, I just want to see if we can get this up for you. Let's do that on the ground, it'd be easier. Let's just move the lid out of the way. That there. So it literally hooks into place like so. Like that. Same with that. Same. Like that. That's it in place. So I'm just going to move that over to put this over here. So in the package that it comes with, we've got attachment for our um, main downspout pipe. Um, we get various attachments for the uh, outlet for the bottom, um, the spout, and there's a little pipe here, obviously to join the thing together. So essentially, that's what it comes with, with various attachments. So I'm assuming that goes on like that and you just put your pipe on there. Uh, so without further ado, let's let's connect that up. Let's see if we can do it with this. Yeah. Right, on the water butt, all you do is you uh, twist it round until it's uh, got into that position and that's the closed pos position in terms of having it connected to your water butt. So that's how you do that. In regards to this, um, on that section there, which is uh, where you attach your pipe to, you've got a rubber washer, so we just want to put that on properly. And then, right. So that's on there properly. Put that in there so there's a good seal. And then that just tightens on the other end. So you just twist that round until it's nice and tight. So that's connected and that's watertight now. So what we do is we attach this end to the corrugated pipe. Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Um, so, today's Friday and it's been quite cold recently, hasn't it? Um, I thought I'd just show you what I've done with the water butt that I've been installing and also the pipe work because uh, I didn't really do a very good job with it um, regarding the downspout into the drain that I've built. So, let, let me just show you what I've actually done and uh, hopefully this video will be informative. So here we've just 
connected it up with a bit of um, gaffer tape and here is the downspout adapter that will run off into the uh, water bottle. Unfortunately it's not the right size. I've tried to figure out a way of getting it to work but I've, it don't work because it's designed for 68mm pipe. My pipe is a 50mm pipe um, I, and temporarily I had to join it with some uh, rubber tape there because I cut it too too short you know um, so essentially it doesn't look too sturdy does it you know I to try and attach it and I realised why on earth did I use um, PVC cement to attach it um, so essentially I just need to take this off and I'm going to put something else on so I've got a package in the post. Let's see what it is. So what is it you might be asking? Well, so I've got a new package in the post, guys. And the pipe is made by Flow Blast. You can get it from B&Q. Um, brown, black and, and grey. Uh, I think they do white pipe as well. Now Flow Blast do a kit that uh, will connect to the downspout thing for the water bottle. So just to show you what the package contains. Also some instructions here, very basic. Um, but essentially what it comes with is a brown attachment for the pipe. You can see there. It comes with another long piece of pipe to connect. And also an adapter uh, which will go on the downspout. Um, so essentially, what does the adapter hold, uh, contain? Sorry. Um, so the adapter essentially is a nut, plat a, a plastic nut um, on a little piece of pipe, two rubber gaskets and you just slot that on both ends on like so and you screw that on and uh, we should get a, a strong seal hopefully so let's put that on right I'm just in the garage because it started to rain again so as you can see you've got this uh, attachment there um, we just need to pop our washer on on the inside it's a rubber washer on the inside like so Pop that in, put our other washer over the top, we've got our nut and let's just screw that in, that should give us a watertight seal, like so. So guys, I just want to uh, give you a little bit of a demonstration and let's do a booking line there. So guys, here's the uh, accessory. Um, so, what you do... Uh, so th here's the accessory that we're using. I'll just demonstrate that. Uh, there's like an overflow area here. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Hopefully you can. An overflow area. So what happens is, um, you have your pipe like so. But here's a piece of pipe. And it goes down the spout enters there's a little hole you probably won't be able to see that um, where the pipe is Hopefully you can see that the little hole can you see that guys anyway um, water fills that void up and once it gets full because the water spout is full the water will overflow and then go down so you'll have another piece of pipe and it'll literally flow down the rest so essentially that's how it, how it works um, and it looks quite nice put on there um, so all I need to do is get my piece of pipe cut it to the right size this time and then it'll be ready to put on okay
So I originally used some Gorilla Super Glue on there um, to attach that to it and it didn't really do a good job so I'm just gonna sand it down. Hi guys, I thought I'd do um, a bit of a tip here for you guys. Whenever you're cutting pipe, I highly recommend you don't buy those pipe cutters you see on eBay. Yes, they're sharp and they cut, you can cut your fingers quite um, nastily. Um, but unfortunately, they don't cut pipe very well. Basically, they end up bending or not cutting properly or make, make, making a mess of your pipe. Forget about it, don't use it. So you can use a standard uh, Stanley, um, this is a 12 point wood saw. Does a good job. Um, some people do use hacksaws. I advise against it. Um, the blade just doesn't do a good job on, on pipes. It's just, it's just a, a mess. It makes a right mess, and you never get a straight cut. Um, so, either a wood saw like this, or get yourself a circular saw that can go through quite quickly and give you a straight cut. Essentially, we want the straightest cut we can so we can attach this to any sort of attachments quite easily. Anyway, I thought I'd just tell you about that. Anyway, I'll just get on with what we're doing here. So I just wanted to show you this little attachment I've got that'll go in between the two pieces of pipe I'm going to connect together. Right, now it's Floor made plast. plast. Same as the pipe. Get that from your local store, um, B&Q. Essentially, what happens is, Water spills down in there, right, and then drips out in, in, in here, this little attachment. And you have this pipe that's connected to this pipe here, like so. And essentially, um, when it overflows, you can see that little hole there. When it overflows, it goes down there and out the other end and through a spout. I just want to show you how that actually works because it it can be quite complicated to actually figure it out when you read the instructions. Um, so there's a little void there, as you can see, and it will fill up this little um, nozzle that diverts the water flow. And the idea is here, is when the water is full in the tank, uh, the water butt, um, it'll flow over that little, um, little pipe raised area and it'll drop down. Just like, if you've seen the, the other video I've done, where I've done a, a drain construction, a French drain, and it's the same principle in that as it is with, with this. So essentially your water goes in there, that gets diverted down that um, narrow passageway into the water bottle. Um, and obviously I've fitted the uh, watertight seal um, nozzle there, so essentially that's all we're doing. Um, so all we need to do really is cut that, and then we'll attach that like so. Just need to give that, see how that goes. And there we go. Got a bit of a angle going down into the the water butt. So a mistake I used before is using that stupid gorilla glue. Um, it just wouldn't glue to this. So. I've come out with the strong stuff this time. This is PVC pipe cement. Highly recommended for any sort of PVC piping um, or even ABS pipe as well. This stuff sets really quickly and I highly recommend you get some of this if you want to connect pipe together. Um, none of that waiting around for glue to set for ages. This will set within probably 30 seconds. So a word of warning when you're sorting out your pipes and you use this stuff dry fit it first and do it one bit at a time don't try and do it all at once because if you've watched one of my other videos where i did the piping for the pond on the outside near the garage you will see that i got extremely frustrated and had to resort to using a sledgehammer to bang some of it into place while it was a bit pliable um probably not a good idea to do that and I hope I, it's, I haven't damaged any of the pipe work doing that um, because this stuff sets in 30 seconds, like I said. Um, so remember, when you're using this stuff, be quick, really quick. Okay. So we just 
just want to give that a, maybe maybe a few minutes to set firm and then I can get the other bit put on. Just a little thing to point out, um, the attachment from Floorplast um, has an arrow giving you an indication on which way to put it. You don't want to put it the wrong way like that. So I just wanted to show you that there is an arrow indicator on there, just showing you which way to put it on. Um, so essentially I just want to give you a closer look again. Um, if you're wondering how much this cost, it was about £15, nearly £20 with postage. So it's not a cheap little thing, um, considering the filter attachment that was on um, really was free with the water butt. And you know, you can buy them separately for about maybe a tenner. However, this is designed to fit my pipe, which is 50mm. So, guys, here's the downspout spout piece of pipe I'm going to attach. Again, we're going to use the uh, PVC solvent weld glue so we just want to attach that on there some glue all the way around give it a good solid amount of glue I wouldn't recommend inhaling this stuff that's that and then we just want to get our attachment and put some in there it's not easy doing this but with one hand just put lots of on it lots of it on okay that's that and then we just slot that on on the top there and let that set for about 30 to 40 seconds and that should give us a solid uh, fit so I'm just gonna fit this uh, filter attachment to the downspout pipe and I just need to figure out the angle because the water spout is here not here so there well it looks symmetrical um, it wouldn't really fit properly, so if I did it at an angle, then we can get that to fit, I think. Off the glue, or cement, round that attachment, good dollop of it. Yeah, and a bit of this on the inside. It's better to put uh, too much on than too little. So I'll just do that. And take the bits off because that will just add weight to it and we just neatly put that on and like that set I've got a bit of tissue here just to wipe the excess off and then we just need to angle that about here so it goes roughly around there Something like that, something like that, yep, that's about right. So, just let that set. Um, so, hold it for maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds, and then give it another minute or two to set properly. I should be able to let go at some point. And uh, let it set. 
Okay, so we just want to uh, glue the other section up now. So, again, put a good dollop round here. underneath here okay and fit that underneath and just give it a bit of time to glue. It will set, um, just give it a bit, a bit of time and that can be a bit boring waiting for something to set in your hands. If you wanted to quicken this pace and get on with other things, I suppose you could put some at the bottom just to lift it up a tad. You should feel it, you should feel it stiffen without you having to hold it. And then I recommend giving it a few minutes after that. There you go, you can let go of it after a while and um, <coughs> that should do the job. Now because it's a bit f loose and uh, move, move, there's a lot of movement in there, um, you can put some rings on, on there and attach it. Normally you'd attach it to your wall um, but because this is a concrete um, I may have to resort to just putting it through the gaps. Um, and you know, put some uh, concrete plugs in there. Um, but I should be able to figure something out with that. Um, but I just wanted to show you how I've gone about getting it fixed now it's stopped raining. Um, I'll give that a few minutes and then I'll attach the plastic pipe to it. Um, now you can use a hacksaw to cut that and that's not, too, not a big issue. But if you're cutting any sort of big solid pipe like this, use a proper saw. Um, I don't use a hacksaw because it, it, you just can't get a straight cut with a hacksaw. Um, so, without uh, further ado, let's give that a little while and get on with the next job. I just thought I'd talk about this pipe. Um, it is quite pliable and bendable, um, so you can manipulate it um, to bend a little bit. Um, so it makes because it's so flexible. Um, it makes it easier to move and adjust um, for this thing that we're doing. Right, it comes with a knot so you can tighten it. <sighs> it doesn't need to be too tight, just enough to create a watertight seal. Essentially just to connect that up really. So I just get a hacksaw and cut it to the right length. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the finished product. Um, it's not perfect. Um, but it should do the job. But I thought it'd be nice to show you it working as well. So I'll get the horse pipe working and on 
and then you can see how the downspipe is working. water going down there, down the downspipe, down into the water box. Seems to have a bit of a leak here like. Let me shut that off. That, that solved that problem. And there you go, we've got some of it going through the system um, into the drain. Um, but a lot of it is also getting captured there. So I just wanted to show you how it's working. Um, let me go to the far end so you guys can have a look. How's it working here? As you can see it's running down there. We are getting a little bit that's holding down at this end. But this is the drainage system for the guttering. Just wanted to show you how it's working. So let's just get back over. So as I've said previously, um, the drain um, we, that we've installed here, we've got a bit of ABS uh, pipe running underneath the flags here, all the way down here. Um, in, in a French drain configuration and then obviously we'll run eventually into the sump hole here and all that is surrounded by gravel and um, hardcore that will soak up the material as you can see not a lot of great what amount of water is getting through um, but the, it's not been raining heavily so that's why so I just wanted to show you the system you've got set in place and there you go. So that's ultimately the system to take the water off the roof of the pond. So the next project we've got to do before we install the liner and get this lot cleaned is I'm going to put a debris net across the back um, to stop a lot of this um, mess, messy leaves from this tree getting in uh, the pond. I may even put some across here as well. Um, that's just to stop these fern leaves getting into the pond. Um, it is a bit of a nightmare. Um, so essentially that's our next project. Um, regarding the uh, small pond, some of you guys were saying um, why are you taking our advice on board? I am doing so. I have ordered some, uh, I think it's clove leaf balls extract, and I'll be putting that in to try and reduce the amount of algae we're getting in here. Um, it just needs a good cleaning, really. And the uh, the guy that recommended a toilet brush. Thanks for that, mate. That's a brilliant idea. So I'll be getting a toilet brush and cleaning up the inside of the pond to get rid of a lot of this algae um, but as you can appreciate it's been quite cold recently and that's something I enjoy getting my hand in freezing cold water um, when it's freezing cold so I have to wait for the temperatures to get a bit better for that but we will be sorting out this pond shortly um, it needs a good a good cleaning um, I may even put a small UV uh, filter on, on this pond as well to reduce the algae because it, it, I don't know why it's getting so bad because I've only got four goldfish in I rarely feed them and there's a ton of plants there's no reason why a ton of algae should be on there anyway anyway guys that's it for today just want to say a big thank you for watching uh, subscribe to the channel like the video if you enjoyed it I do appreciate you guys that uh, do follow me um, and obviously I do in turn on yours as well um, one thing before you go I want to make an offer. That offer is to you YouTubers out there, you pond YouTubers that are quite regular uploaders that are interested in ponds. 
I'm contemplating doing a YouTube um, koi pond, goldfish pond barbecue. So in the summer I'm going to invite anyone out there who is a pond enthusiast when I've got my pond sorted out I'm going to welcome you to to my board and I'll put a big spread on for you guys so if you're interested go to the contact me uh, about page and um, there should be my email address send me uh, a contact and um, when the time is near I'll invite you obviously but um there's just something I want to put out there um, as a little special thing for all the YouTubers out there that are uploading content for their koi ponds, building their ponds, the hard work they're putting into it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that's a good idea? Anyway, I'll see you later and have a nice weekend. Bye bye. <laughs>